2018 Spider-Man was an absolute masterpiece. It quickly became one of my favorite games because of the way it effortlessly made us feel like real superheroes. Up until that game's release, it was kind of hard to find superhero games that were actually good. But Spider-Man flipped that narrative on its head and completely redefined what it means to make a great superhero game. And now, five years later, the long-awaited sequel is finally here. And it's basically just a better, more refined version of the first game. And of course, that's to say that it's pretty damn good. It isn't perfect, and there's definitely some places where I wish they had done things differently, but I still had an absolute blast playing through Spider-Man 2, and today I'd like to take some time to talk about the thing that I think makes this game so special, the way that it makes us feel like Spider-Man. In my view, it all starts with the way that you get around in this game. As you'd expect, web swinging has never felt this good in a video game before. It's basically the same as it was in the first game, only with a couple of tweaks to make things feel even better. They've added a bunch of new traversal abilities that really help bring things to the next level. I especially had fun with the slingshot ability where you just kind of lean back into it. Woo! I also really dig this new mid-air jump and dash that they added, which really allows you to pick up speed in between swings. And that's really what this whole system is about, is speed. Speed and momentum, to be more specific. The trick with this game's web swinging ability is that it really makes you feel like you're good at what you're doing. Even if it is a relatively simple system, the system is designed in a way that makes it feel like there really is a certain amount of know-how that you have to have to be able to keep momentum and keep swinging around New York. But really, it, it is just something that can be done very effortlessly. But when you get going fast in between web zips and swings, you start to feel like you're really a master of this mechanic, just like you'd need to be if you were actually Spider-Man. New to Spider-Man 2, this game gives you the ability to use something called web wings, where you just essentially deploy these wings and fly around like you're in just cause. When I first saw this ability on the run-up to this game, I thought it looked really incredible. But now that I've played the game and used the ability, I have to say that, at least to me, it feels like a bit of an afterthought. Controlling the wingsuit feels heavy and non-responsive at times. I found that it was really only especially useful when you're in one of the wind tunnels that the game has placed around the city, which can make it feel like a bit of an on-rails experience. And it certainly made it easier to cross the river that separates Manhattan from Brooklyn and Queens, but outside of that, I found it to be much more effective to just web swing around the map, and it's way more fun to do it that way too. Next up, we have to talk about the combat system. And in the pursuit to make players feel like Spider-Man, this system is nearly just as important as the web swinging mechanics. And as you'd expect, they get it right. It's, it's basically perfect with a few small exceptions that I'll get into. Dodging around, punching and kicking bad guys until they're unconscious has once again never felt this good. There are a few areas, like I said, where I feel like they could have made some improvements, namely the way that enemies feel a little bit too tanky. They're like big walking punching bags. It's like you got to punch these guys like 80 or 90 times before they go down, and it just starts to feel like it's a bit much, especially when you consider the volume of enemies that this game throws at you at a given any given time. But at the end of the day, I think that can be forgiven because of how fast fun and fluid the combat system feels. Like I said, there's just something about dodging and sliding around like a madman, sending dudes flying in every direction. It just feels so fun and satisfying. On top of all that, they've taken some steps to deepen the combat mechanics for Spider-Man 2. Most notably, they added a parry mechanic. This works basically exactly as you expect that it would, and it feels very satisfying to pull off as it should. This game has some awesome audio cues that play after a successful parry that just makes it feel so great. I do have to be honest though and say that I wasn't a huge fan of the fact that they added undodgeable attacks to complement the parry mechanic. So basically any attack that you're meant to parry is undodgeable. It isn't a huge deal, but I definitely found myself getting overwhelmed where I'd get confused. Like you've got 7,000 guys standing around you. They're all punching you and shooting at you and this that and the other thing and you have to pay attention to one of them is going to do something that you're going to have to parry and you don't know who's going to do it and by the time they do it it's too late and you've dodged and you've got hit because you can't dodge there it, it's a whole thing 
And I don't think it ruins the combat system by any means, but it definitely makes it a little bit more tedious than I would have liked. It's not something that I would say outright ruins the gameplay or anything, but it's just something I wanted to mention as a bit of an issue. Um, who knows? Maybe I'm just dog shit and everybody else didn't have this problem, but for me... It was just a little bit much. Another key aspect of the combat that I think is important to point out is the way that the game integrates both Miles and Peter into the various combat systems. Most notably, it's just the fact that they have their own distinct abilities. And I really enjoy this because you're constantly switching between the two characters as you play through the game. And it really makes the gameplay feel fresh when you have like a whole set new set of abilities to work with every so often. And you can upgrade each of them individually in their own skill trees. So it really makes the gameplay feel a lot more dynamic and there's a lot more going on that you have to keep track of while you're fighting people. It just makes the game feel a lot more fun and interesting as you kind of play through the game and you switch between the two characters. I think probably the biggest difference between the combat in this game and 2018 Spider-Man is the introduction of the symbiote suit and the powers that accompany it. I won't talk too, too much about the symbiote suit here because I don't want to get into spoiler territory, but I do want to talk a little bit just about how it feels to use because it feels great. It's just fantastic. The, the added abilities and the way the animations work for them, it just feels so natural and fluid. It's, it's incredible. Especially when you go into this rage mode. Um, when you enter rage mode, you start just going sicko mode with the... You just got the big symbiote stuff coming off your arms and you're slamming dudes around, picking them up, fucking beating the shit out of them. It's awesome. I've never felt a game that just feels this satisfying in melee combat. The audio is so impactful and punchy and it just feels so satisfying to use this thing. As I mentioned, like the animations are immaculate. I could go on and on and on about the way the symbiote just flows off of you and grabs onto enemies and it's it's awesome stuff and the combat with the symbiote suit is definitely where spider-man 2 is at its best and it is fantastic there you couldn't be spider-man without being in a great rendition of new york city and this game definitely delivers on that manhattan looks fantastic as you would expect coming from the first game it's evolved a bit and changed and it looks even better than it did before but they've also included brooklyn and queens on the other side of the river which nearly doubles the size of the map from the first game i really like the way this game looks from a superficial standpoint and i love the way the open world feels and just everything as you kind of swing around it's great but I do have some issues with the deeper problems that carried over from the first game. It is impossible for me to overstate how uninteresting, dull, and boring I find this game's side objectives. It's a shame because I, I really love the main story and I enjoyed most of the objectives you're given throughout that. But I just think that the side objectives of go here, solve this weird puzzle, or go there and clear out this camp of bad guys, it's just underwhelming and uninspired in my view. And I'd, I'd really hope that they'd made some improvements here over the first game, but it's basically exactly the same. So I'd like to see a more dynamic open world for the third game. Instead of shoving a massive amount of random side objectives down our throats, I'd love to see this game take the same approach as a game like Red Dead Redemption 2 two where you're just constantly running into random events that are happening and there's such a massive variety of them that you can go 50 or 100 hours into the game and still run into new stuff that just makes the game feel fresh and like unique every time you play it. Spider-Man 2 begins to deliver on that the same way the first game did with random crime events. You know as you're swinging around you're going to run into some bad guys trying to beat up an old lady or break into a store or something and you can stop them and gain XP. And this is fine and all, but there's only a small handful of these objectives in the game. And the result is that these objectives start to feel very repetitive very quickly. What I'd really like to see is that there'd be enough variety in these random events that like I said, you go 50 or 100 hours of playing and you're still running into new stuff that happens. There should be like rare events that rarely ever happen. So you can get taken by surprise by something that's different and unique. And that's what Red Dead 2 does. And I know 
these two games are not at all the same, but I think every game can learn something from Red Dead 2, especially when it comes to how to design an open world, because there are so few games that come anywhere near how good that game is in that regard. And I think that Spider-Man kind of lacks in the open world department. So I'd really like to see it take some cues from that to kind of spice things up and make things feel like there's a little bit more variety and it's just a little bit more interesting than what we have now. As with the first game, Spider-Man 2's story is excellent. Obviously, I won't talk about specifics here to avoid spoilers, but I just wanna kinda of talk about it from a general perspective. I think this game actually surpasses the original when it comes to the way it tells its story. There are all kinds of twists and turns that kept me completely engaged throughout my entire time playing this game. Because you play as both Peter Parker and Miles Morales, you get to experience two different stories as the game progresses. And this is a really unique experience that I'm not really sure I've ever had in a video game before. Grand Theft Auto V kind of does this, but all those characters are so intertwined all the time in that game. And in Spider-Man 2, it's just, it's not quite like that. And it's really unique and interesting. And I really love that part of this game. That's about all I want to talk about though, when it comes to at least the positives of the story, because I don't want to spoil anything, but there are a couple of negatives I want to talk about from a broad perspective. One part of the story that I absolutely have to criticize is the fact that you do indeed need to play as Mary Jane for a few missions. I think this was one aspect of the first game that was basically universally disliked by everybody. And for whatever reason, they decided to keep it up in this game. I'm not really sure what the thought process there is. Now, to Insomniac's credit, playing as Mary Jane in Spider-Man 2 is much more interesting than it was in the first game. You're given this little stun gun thing and you can actually do some pretty good damage with it. And it makes the gameplay feel way more interesting than it did in the first game. But with that said, it's still kind of boring. When you're playing as Spider-Man and you're, everything's moving at a million miles an hour and you're kicking everybody in the head, when you're swinging around doing triple backflips, it's like, okay, now I'm gonna go play as this redhead and run around with my little gun and ooh, I'm sneaking around. Not for me, boys. I'm sorry to say, it's just, it takes you out of the experience. I get why they include missions like this. You know, it's to kind of give you a break from the gameplay loop and throw you into something sort of unique and different so that you get re-engaged re in the gameplay loop when you finally get back to it. And while you do get re-engaged, you feel very refreshed to start playing as Spider-Man again. That part where you're playing as Mary Jane is just so boring that I don't think it's really worth it, to be honest, because I wasn't getting bored of being Spider-Man. <laughs> surprise, surprise. It's not boring to be Spider-Man. So don't really think it's necessary, and I kind of wish they hadn't included it, at least not in the way that they do in Spider-Man 2. But what is worse than that are the missions where you just play as Peter Parker or you just play as Miles Morales. I want to start by saying that I totally get why they include these. Just like the Mary Jane missions, for one thing, it adds that break. You get that little break from being Spider-Man. Not that I was looking for a break, but game developers know more than me about the what I want, apparently, so they give it to, they give it to us, whatever. But at the end of the day, the Peter Parker missions are like way more boring than the Mary Jane missions. Nothing's going on. You're just like walking around Coney Island, getting a fucking hot dog and playing the water gun game at the amusement park. It's like, why are we doing this? I'm playing this, these stupid ass games where it's like, oh, throw the ball at the cups, blah, blah. Like, I don't know, man. It's, it's, it's kind of goofy and it's, it's not the end of the world to be honest. Uh, you know, you, you gotta deal with this. Every game has some shit like this where it's like just boring for no reason. Nobody wants it to be boring. Nobody wants to do this, but they gotta do it just because game developers like to stroke their meat. I get it, okay? At the end of the day for me, missions like this should just be cutscenes. Instead of having me walk around Coney Island, beating my dick, fucking rolling around, doing shit, Instead of that, how about just make it a cutscene? It could be a 30 second cutscene. Oh, the boys went to Coney Island, they went on the Ferris wheel. Simple, fast to the point. None of this walking around crap saves me some time. That's all I'm saying, you know? And I know a lot of people will say, well, this game already has like a million cutscenes. And it does, it has like five and a half hours of cutscenes. I'd rather have another hour and a half of cutscenes or another hour of cutscenes than walking around Coney Island playing carnival games and just kind of meandering my way around, 
like, or just how about how about worse than that? Walking around the house, looking at stuff, being like, "Oh, my mortgage is overdue. I need to pay five thousand dollars of mortgage." Like, <laughs> I don't know. It's just it's boring. It's stupid, and I don't know why they do it like this, but they do. And it doesn't ruin the game. I know I'm complaining a lot, but it doesn't ruin the game. The game is still awesome, but those things are just little nitpicks that I have to point out because, um, you know, I just, I like to complain. But that's pretty much all I have to say about Spider-Man 2. Uh, like I said, I think it's an excellent game. Has a few flaws here and there, but overall, I had an absolute blast playing this game. I think it's worth it at full price for most people. Um, I mean... You know, it's as close to being worth it at full price as any game anyway, whether a game is worth 70, 80, a hundred dollars, depending on where you live. You know, that's, that's for you to decide, <laughs> but you'll get probably about 20 hours out of this game. And I think that that's, that's a pretty good value for the fun that you're going to have. And for it being a brand new game, um, I think it's worth it. So if you have a PlayStation five, my recommendations on it, you want to feel like Spider-Man, do you want to swing around and shit? God bless, I'd probably pick this one up. And I want to say that I really like to see more games step up to the plate here. Um, why is Spider-Man the only good superhero game? We had the Batman Arkham games, those were good, and then that's it, pretty much, besides Spider-Man. I don't know what's going on here. What's not fun about being a superhero? Why is it so hard to make good superhero games? Very confusing to me. Uh, let me know what you think about that. Let me know what, what superheroes you'd like to see in video games because I'm not a big superhero head. I'm not a big Marvel head. Some of you are Marvel heads. You know what I'm saying? You got that... <laughs> you got that comic book collection. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Like, subscribe, comment, comment again. I'll be down there chit-chatting. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you have a good rest of your day. That's all I got. Peace.